Good morning. I want to thank the society for having us here today. My name is Michael Doe. Uh, me and nothing uh, and nor any of the authors have anything to disclose. Median arc with Ligon syndrome is a rare disorder. It's typically characterized by three symptoms, postprandial abdominal pain, weight loss, and emesis. And it's thought to be caused by compression of the celiac artery by the median arc with ligament which is a fibrous band that connects both the right and left crura that, run, that runs over the aorta of cephalad the celiac artery. Symptoms are thought to be caused by compression of the celiac artery, leading to a relative mesenteric ischemia coupled with possible steel phenomena from SMA collaterals. Another popular theory is that the ligament actually compresses the celiac ganglion plexus, leading to a neurogenic type of pain. In terms of treatment, Classically, the treatment has been an open division of the ligament through uh, upper midline laparotomy. In the past several years, there have been multiple series demonstrating successful use of laparoscopic surgical division of the ligament. And in the last couple of years, there have been a couple of case reports and one small series demonstrating ro robotic assisted approaches. The objective of the study was to demonstrate our experience uh, with robotic and laparoscopic surgery for median arcuate ligament syndrome. Our methods, this was an IRB approval that studied a total of 16 patients, 12 of which were performed laparoscopically and four of which were performed robotically. In terms of the diagnosis of our patients, the vast majority of your patients, 15 out of 16 patients were diagnosed with uh, duplex ultrasound, which typically demonstrated a peak velocity greater than 350 centimeters per second or a peak velocity greater than 200 centimeters per second coupled with a variation with respiration. Additionally, a number of patients, 11 out of 16 patients, had their diagnosis confirmed with CTA, and an additional six patients had an angio, and one had an MRA. In terms of the laparoscopic operative technique, we utilized five ports. We had uh, umbilical camera port, and then we had uh, four five millimeter ports. This port was utilized for the liver retractor, and then there were two operative ports and one assistant port. And uh, after placing the liver retractor, the lesser sac was entered using hook cautery. The esophagus was retracted laterally, and the ligament was divided uh, along the aorta all the way down to the celiac artery using hook cautery. In terms of the robotic assisted technique, this utilized six trocars. Uh, again, there was a liver retractor trocar, three robotic arms, one robotic camera port, and an assistant port. And uh, the operation was done in a similar fashion, entering the lesser sac and dividing the ligament using a combination of hook cautery and ultrasonic shears. In terms of our results, the main difference we found was a difference in operative time between the two groups. The mean operative time for the laparoscopic group was 101 minutes. The mean operative time for the robotic group was 145 minutes. There were no complications, conversions, or deaths in either group. Uh, the length of stay was comparable between the two groups. 12 out of 16 patients only stayed one day after surgery, and the length of follow-up was also comparable between the two groups. Additionally, 67% uh, of patients in the laparoscopic group had complete resolution of their symptoms on follow-up, with an additional one patient reporting partial resolution. Uh, two out of four patients in the robotic group had uh, complete resolution of their symptoms. In terms of Cessation of chronic narcotic use, three out of four patients in the laparoscopic group ceased narcotic use, and two out of four patients in the robotic group ceased taking narcotics after surgery. In conclusion, we've demonstrated that uh, minimally invasive surgery in terms of laparoscopic and robotic approaches can be successfully used to treat mouths with minimal morbidity and mortality. In this particular study, we found no discrete advantage to using robotic surgery. However, one main limitation of the study, it is very underpowered, secondary to small sample size. Again, I want to thank the society for having us here today. Thank you. Can I open the floor for some questions? Dmitry Olenikov, uh, Omaha, Nebraska. <coughs> you know, if there's an argument to use the robot for something totally crazy, this is it. Uh, we've uh, we've uh, published uh, a case series of these and have something on the Sages uh, video of doing this laparoscopically. The dissection is extraordinarily tenuous and you have to have very, very steady hands if you're doing this laparoscopically. I think the robot uh, with its uh, 
finer movements and scaling really assists here. Um, my, my question for you is, is how many uh, of these arguments do you think you have to do to be able to show benefit with the robot, number one? And then number two, um, did any of your patients improve? Uh, because our vascular guys have given up this operation uh, for lack of any discernible benefit to the patient. For the first question, uh, in terms of the number of patients we'd have to, to see uh, adequately powered study, we'd have to have 107 patients in each group have an 80% power. And unfortunately, that, that is a very large amount. Looking at the numbers of case series, they've typically run from 14 to 15 patients. Um, and, and that's definitely a drawback. Uh, secondly, there have been a couple of patients in our laparoscopic group that did subsequently have to have uh, a vascular intervention that had partial success afterwards. But again, it's not a, a definitive treatment. Thank you very much.